Welcome to the Corn Mafia Guild Twitter space. I'm your host, Stein. And I'm your co-host, Ryler. Thank you for joining us today. The show will begin momentarily. This forum does not reflect the official opinion of the Corn Mafia Guild. Rather, it serves as a platform for members and guests to express their individual perspectives and opinions. We hope to create an environment where a variety of topics and conversations can take place, ultimately enriching the experience of our members and guests. We value and respect diverse opinions, and we encourage all to engage in respectful discourse. Welcome, 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 everybody. I'm Stein. I'm here with my co-host, Freiler. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Today's Twitter space is, will Cardano lose NFT royalties? It's a, it's a hard subject for me because I don't know too much about it. But my co-host, Freiler, does. So uh, I'm going to bring him up here onto stage, which I should have done earlier. There we go. You up here, Fryler? He's coming up now. There we go. Sorry about that. It's all good, Stein. How are you yeah. doing this morning? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. So let's let's roll right into this. Let's not uh, wait for people can roll in whenever they want to, but let's go ahead and uh, start off the conversation. And I'm going to let you take it away on this one because uh, you know more about it. And uh, I think that's what we're going to do. Go ahead. All right. Excellent. Sounds good. Well, today's topic was suggested by one of our community members, Kef. Uh, so I hope he makes it in here today because this will be a great discussion. But basically, we wanted to take a look at what would happen if a marketplace released on Cardano that didn't enforce creators' royalties and maybe didn't have any fees at all. We've seen this happen on Solana and Ethereum so far, and I would not doubt that we're going to eventually get one of those marketplaces that drops on Cardano. So it's it's had some interesting effects on these other marketplaces and uh i just wanted to discuss with you guys and see what you guys thought because I, I think there's many different ways it could go down so one of the things that we saw on like ethereum was OpenSea used to have the majority of the market like over 90 percent of the market right well then when blur dropped they made they didn't enforce creator royalties so that's cheaper on the traders right and then they also released a token that incentivizes people to trade on their platform and they basically took over the majority market share from OpenSea. And we've seen a similar thing happen on uh, Solana with Magic Eden as well. And so these marketplaces are kind of rolling with the punches. And uh, like in the case of Magic Eden, they had stuck by creator royalties. They're like, no, we believe in that. We're going to stand by it. Well, after they started losing the majority of their market share, they're like, actually, hang on. We're going we're gonna to go back on that and we're going to make creator royalties optional. So we've got a lot of things going on in this space, and I wonder how would the lack of creator royalties affect a project like Cornucopia's? I know obviously they have other revenue streams, you know, um, but I, I wanted to take a look at how that might affect them. I think it's going to vastly affect other projects a lot more. But uh, yeah, one other thing that we saw too is, and I'm not sure if it was directly in relation to it, but some big projects started to migrate off of Solana, like their two biggest projects, DGOD and Utes. They're going to be migrating over to Ethereum and Polygon now. So I think they might run into the same kind of situation on Ethereum. I'm not sure if they left Solana because of the royalties thing and they're just running into it in a new place now, or if there was other reasons for it. But yeah, there's there's a lot going on. You know, how's that going to affect uh, Veritry and things like that? So, um, yeah, I'm definitely interested. I'm surprised we don't have one launching right now, but I bet there's one being built. So, uh, what do you think about that, Stein? I think it's I think it's scary. <laughs> I really do. I mean, if 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 the NFTs will have no royalties, how will how will people? uh make money let me let me ask you a question will it will, will it will they also strip royalties can you can you like take so some, take something and, and strip the royalties off or or, or how does how does that work I, I really don't know how that works 
So basically, creator royalties aren't enforceable on chain. So marketplaces were enforcing it, but now that the marketplaces are making it optional, they're basically leaving it open for you to decide. Is it important enough for you? And uh, in these other places like Magic Eden, it's actually on uh, the buyer, I believe, not even the seller. So the buyer has to decide if they want to basically, it'll act as like a tip to the creators now instead of being actual royalties that's enforced. So, you know, I, I think on Cardano, we have a lot of people that enjoy supporting their projects and they wanted to see those royalties. I know like initially in our own story, we had cnft.io that didn't offer creator royalties. And then when JPEG store came out and was enforcing the royalties, people really responded positively to that. So, but then again, you know, at the end of the day, it's people's money. So I think people are going to choose, especially if they're trading high dollar NFTs to probably opt out if they're buying at least, I guess it depends on who they put the onus on. So that, that'll that affect, uh, I know I know the royalties on NFTs, like if you sell a, sell a, sell something and, okay, say it's 10%, 10 say you say sell it for 100 ADA, you get 10 ADA. And now that's carried over from every time it's sold, correct? Uh, like it goes into the creator royalty wallet, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So every like if if it's sold multiple times, you're still getting ten percent every time it's sold, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they they're looking to just strip all that out or not using it all. That I think that's that's kind of weak. <laughs> I don't think that's good. I don't think that's good yeah. for, for any anybody. You know? I wonder if we're gonna start seeing uh you know just a complete race to the bottom. Uh, with no fees for these marketplaces and no creator royalties being enforced. Well, I don't think creators are going to create anything. If they're, if they're not going to make any money, why would they create anything? Yeah. So there, so there's one of the, one of the main points. Are we going to see big projects move away from Cardano? If, if that happened? I don't, I don't think so. Cause I, I, I don't, I mean, that's optional, right? To create with no royalties or is that, how is how is that enforced? I, I just I, I don't get it. I mean, if a creator wants to put a royalty, isn't it in the smart contract of an, of the NFT, or or not? No, no. It, it, yeah, no, it's not. It's not enforced on the chain. Uh, here we have a couple of speakers coming out. Let me add Price and KB real quick. All right. How's it going today, gentlemen? How you doing? Yeah, go for it, Price. Oh, thanks. Hey guys, uh, I'm doing all right today. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, like Thanks. the discussion so far, and I can tell you now, you're not safe when it comes to royalty-free on literally any exchange. There are protocols being put together right now to protect Cardano. Uh, I think I heard from Avatar Nick behind the CIP68 protocol. Uh, I, I'm sorry, that's technically Sebastian, and I think Avatar Nick was putting the first NFTs for it. But they have some stuff being put in to basically have it written into the smart truck contract. You can't technically put it on chain. Um, but the issue at, at hand is technically any NFT can just be wrapped. And once you've wrapped the NFT, which can be done on literally any blockchain at all, it acts as if it hasn't been moved at all. So in theory, you can move NFTs without moving them and thus get around royalties. I unfortunately don't think there is a bulletproof methodology for anybody. Well, that's interesting. I had no idea uh, that you could wrap the NFTs like that. That's definitely interesting. So there's going to be something put in CIP 68, though, that's going to help uh, protect those royalties in a way, some sort of smart contract. Yeah, that's right. I'm um, not exactly sure how it works at the end of the day, whether or not it, it forces the movement of the money or at least calls out those who have done um, royalty free trades. Um, but the idea is to at least allow the creators of the project to find those wallets that aren't paying royalty, and then they can put um, restrictions against it. Say, for instance, you're eligible for staking rewards. They can actually cut you off or draw from your the amount of royalties you should have paid, and they can deduct that from your staking rewards that you receive. Let me ask you a question. Well, uh, excuse my ignorance on this subject, but... Um... So if you wrap an NFT 
What what's the benefit of wrapping it? I mean, is it is it so you can just move it without paying fees? Is is that what it's all about? Uh, why would somebody want to wrap it? And uh, what's the, what's the benefit of doing doing that? Yeah, I mean that's the basic idea. Is it allows you to bypass the chain, so technically you're anonymous and you can get around the whole royalty system. And you can see this stuff with bridges where you're not actually sending the NFT because they haven't built the bridge to do it, but they've created these wrapped tokens to act as a proxy, if you will. Um, so you can redeem those tokens back for the regular ones or vice versa, but it's a way to move thing, move value without moving assets. All right, well, is that is that done so people can do private sales on these NFTs? I mean, what, I mean, if you're just gonna move it, you have to unwrap it to sell it, correct? Or can you just sell it wrapped in, in uh, well, you can sell it wrapped. So let's take, for instance, an Ethereum-based token could technically be sold on Cardano if somebody decided to create a wrapped token and then make a loose association with that Ethereum um, uh, Ethereum address and, and the, the policy information there. That way, when Ethereum ultimately bridges, then you can take that wrapped token, which would un otherwise be unavailable to you, and then redeem it for that NFT at the, uh, like I said, once the bridge is built. Okay, so you can unwrap it. Can you, is that possible to unwrap it? To, I mean, if you wanted to say, yeah. say, it, say it, may, it went up in value and you wanted to sell it on- mm -hmm. You on, sell a wrapped asset, but the only, you can never technically unwrap it. What you do is burn it at the end of the day. Once you've redeemed it, you destroy the wrapped token because now you've got the actual asset. You don't need the wrapped asset. Okay, but you'll still have the asset. You'll still have the asset, that's right. Now, here's the catch. When you have this wrapped asset, technically you're not supposed to be moving the original asset around. I don't know what happens to that one. As I understand, I, I, I'm gonna go with a really high level concept when you wrap the asset, you're sort of sending it somewhere else. Then you get the wrapped equivalent, and then you can send your wrapped back, and it gives you back your NFT. Oh, okay. So you're you're just you're not technically destroying the NFT. You're just sort of putting it in holding, and then you're you're basically transferring it for something else. All right. All right. Well, is that is that? I mean, you know. Is there a big benefit to do that? Or you know, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to think of what. Yeah, there's one fundamental benefit. It lets you do things you otherwise would not be able to do. Okay, so that's it. It's like, like if, if you want to move something because you, you're an early adopter to this chain or something like that, and you have an NFT and you want to move it from whoops, wherever to wherever, that's that's the biggest benefit, correct? Am, am I getting correct? That? Okay. I think the biggest use of wrapping today is with Ethereum staked um, at, uh, at tokens where you know you can't unstake those, but people still want to trade the new Ethereum 2.0. So they just created a wrapped token to act as that uh, proxy for those staked Ethereum tokens that you've got locked up. Okay. You... I think the biggest benefit to wrapping today is Seven's music channel. <laughs> <laughs> so you, do, you think, uh, do you think this could happen to Cardano? Yeah. Absolutely. I think it, it's susceptible everywhere. Uh, I just don't see it as often on Cardano, but I would not be surprised if somebody showed me some existing examples of wrapped tokens on Cardano. I mean, because everything is so cheap on Cardano. I mean, I know maybe on ETH it's really expensive, though, so they started wrapping things. If if I get off on my train of th thought, you have to let me know because I'm a lot of this crypto stuff I try to get my head around you know it's 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 hard for me it's it's like uh you know trying trying to think of how big the universe is in your brain um so eth has a has high fees but cardano does not so i'm wondering if it's going to be beneficial to do it on cardano at all i mean being that everything's Good. so cheap it, it could be valuable in that case, but you really need to have a big enough market in order to make it worth your time. So right now, Cardano is really not that high up in terms of the NFT rankings overall. I think with Polygon is second right now. 
Um, so maybe when everybody starts flocking to Cardano, you'll see a lot more of this action come through. Yeah, I is that is the wrapping and everything similar to what's happening with like Bitcoin ordinals right now? I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know too much about it other than there was a major innovation around ordinals where basically they're indexing the blockchain, as I understand it. And that uh, opens up the ability to do what they've done. Uh, but it is not a wrapping approach from what I understand. Okay. I did hear that people were moving NFTs from other blockchains over to Bitcoin, which I didn't read all the details of how that works and things like that, but I thought it was an interesting development and it's on my list to look into. So yeah, it, same enough, but it, um, ring a bell. It, it doesn't look like they're moving. It looks like they're creating another NFT entirely. Like I saw some right. tags burning, the other day, but they look burning and minting. Different. It's not even burning and minting from what I understand. It's a completely new set of NFTs. So from my understanding, I, I had the same understanding as Scruffy is that they're burning the NFT on this chain to mint it on uh, Bitcoin's chain. Yeah, because I, I, they, they use the term moving. And so that made me think, and I get it. I mean, I understand, like you said, it's just like a bridge. You burn the tokens and then remint them on the other side, whether they're wrapped or, or, or a completely brand spanking new version of it. But um yeah, I'll have to look into that. I apologize. I'm I, I thought if you prepared, burn, I thought if you burn an NFT, <laughs> isn't it destroyed? Well, yes, but if you create it again on another blockchain, essentially you can look at it as being moved, but it really isn't. In all reality, it's a brand new entity. Yeah, just note you can't actually burn on Cardano. Uh, what you're effectively doing is just moving it to a graveyard. Okay. I love how all these terms are like, so, and this is why people have such a hard time with crypto is none of these terms actually mean what they mean. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we say we're burning it, but you, you don't really burn it. You just send it to a wallet we can't access. And uh, we're moving it over here, but really we created a whole new asset and we're burning these. <laughs> and it just, it's, it's so hard for people to follow from the outside. Sometimes well, we I, made it difficult. I'm, I, I swear. <laughs> I always thought that if you moved it to a wallet that nobody can access, can't maybe somebody access it in the future. I mean, whoever whoever created the wallet <laughs> you know i mean that's about my head you know it's like ah, move all your nfts over here that you know we're, this is a graveyard and you know 10 years down the road it'd be like all these rare nfts come out of, onto the market and nobody knows where they came from but they came from somebody's burn no wallet. it'll just be billions and billions and trillions of hoskies you know, I we're we're so far <laughs> off track now, but I gotta say, I would never send any NFTs to a burn wallet because I've had useless NFTs given to me. In the last one that I traded in, I sold for 450 ADA. It was worthless for a year, and then I sold it for 450 ADA. So don't ever send NFTs to a burn wallet. Keep them in your wallet. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I sent so, one ship coin to to a burn wallet and I, I really wish i didn't, never did that i could have got a half a penny one shit one shit oh man <laughs> one shit what no. were you thinking i don't know man I, I don't know what i was thinking so is, there is, goes the ferrari there yeah i know right no lambos for me no ferraris tell Jesus. me you fumbled generational wealth <laughs> does kb want to talk or is he just uh in there with a speaker role listening no, 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 no. I'm, I'm in here. I, I just wanted to wait for your totally not related to the topic uh, well, discussion. Bring so us I back, KB. Bring first, us back. <laughs> first, first up, there are already rep, um, rep tokens or representatives of BTC coming to Cardano. It's called Anata BTC, Anita, which is on Cargo yes. and, and Cardano. They are wrapping BTC, uh, burning on one side and, and thinking on the other side. And to the initial question, I think we have to distinguish whether it's a necessary to have royalties or not. For example, uh, a PFP project, um, the, art, the, the artist gets a lot of aid for the initial work when there is no utility, when it's just art. So mm -hmm. I would say it's fine that there are no royalties. But when it comes, for example, our DAO tokens, we use all the funds that were created during minting to purchase something. So there's nothing left. Now, we use the royalties for the maintenance, for different bots that we have to pay for, for 
for giveaways, for raffles, and so on and so forth. So we we we, we need the royalties in this case for um, upkeeping. It's not uh, the money is not for us or the either. It's just it's it's given back to the community. And without for without the royalties, we could either not invest everything, or we couldn't offer anything to the community back. You know what I mean? So maybe this is uh, one way to look at it. Yeah, no, I I agree. I, I think there's going to be, especially for our guilds, you know, they need some longevity too. I think I think this will have bigger impacts on the smaller projects, but even on projects like uh, Cornucopias, obviously they're going to survive without that royalty. What is it set at five percent somewhere now around there? I'm guessing. But how will it affect things like the staking in game and stuff? Because like you said, there's a whole economy, right? And this is a piece in that economy, and it's going to have some sort of trickle down effects, I could imagine, inside Cornucopias. Not to mention what it could potentially do to like the Veritree partnership. Well, and and you mentioned that as far as effect that it might have on the project, but also in game, right? I know they were talking about having royalties in game for for things you're doing, and if if they start to see the the tides are changing across the board, would they possibly look at removing those from in game? Hope not. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a concern, right? We're kind of, it feels like we're starting that race to the bottom, you know? Jesus, Scruffy, don't scare me like that, man. Well, I, I again, I'm just, I, Boy, I putting, don't mean to be. putting like, doom in my heart, man. I'm just like, now well, I don't even have, I didn't have nothing to say to you for a few seconds. My mind was just like, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't think it's very likely. They've been very vocal on wanting to reward people for various actions for, you know, the, Freiler had a great video the other day. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, talking about rewarding for testing and, and and things like that. And so I think they've shown precedent that if they can build it in and support it, it I, I think it actually depends on how government regulation comes down. What does that look like? I think if they're able to, you know, and, and, and they're not going to break any U.S. laws, then I think they will. But if U.S. comes and imposes laws, that would make it where they would have to segregate the U.S. market versus everybody else and, and, and all that, then, then they might just kind of do away with it altogether. I don't know. I'm Again, this is all speculation, but uh, hopefully the U.S. won't get too restrictive as far as, you know, royalty type stuff. Look, the, the U.S. government, they just want to get their cut. OK, they can build it in. Fine. You want to tax us for royalties? No problem. Build in mechanisms to do don't, that. You don't but say. just don't make it to where we can't do it. Do what? I said you don't say, right? You don't say. Jeez. America, America all, they, all they want is that cut, man. You don't say. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that just, that just flowed no, out. No, no, no. I was done. <laughs> no, I, I was done. I just, I mean, If like, there's money to be got, they, every, they want it, right? I mean. Exactly. Geez. That's that's my point. Why did, why did so many states in the United States legalize marijuana? It wasn't because they really thought it was doing good for America. It's so that they could freaking tax it. Yeah, I know, right? But you still can't put it in the bank. Still can't put the money in the well, bank. that's like that's that has to do with states' rights and yeah. and and you know, nationwide laws and all that good stuff. But uh, we need to legalize it federally, right? Exactly. If they legalized it federally, the banks would all take it. And again, nobody says that you can't put it in banks in other countries and then turn it into crypto and bring it back over here. And I mean, well, I don't. Know. I don't know what the legalities are of that. So if you're trying to do all that stuff, yeah. don't tell, don't tell the government. Scruffy told you to do it. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Scruffy yeah. gave me financial advice. Right. right. I don't. I don't know how I'm going to stake my five pounds of Kush. <laughs> <laughs> Scruffy told me to go put it in the Cayman Islands, turn it into crypto, and bring it back. Yep. Hey, Scruffy, okay. here he is, right here. He'll be in the Twitter space every Wednesday. <laughs> Come and get him. Come and get him. So it's it's a little off topic, but while we're already here in La La Land, uh, it's what is the deal? Why doesn't the U.S. get to partake in all this fun stuff? Why don't they want us staking and things like that, you know? Speaking of, all these different marketplaces are dropping that token. I think that's one side of the coin that's getting a lot of that traffic to them. People just want that free money, you know, but we can't we can't accept those airdrops if we're in America or Canada. Am I correct? Well, I... I... 
it's just what Scruffy been, said. It is, it's money. I'm sorry, Scruff, go ahead. Yeah. I, I don't believe there's been any legislation that's passed yet. There's been several bills put before Congress, but none of nothing has passed. And nobody knows what it looks like. But when, you, when we're talking about the subject here, NFT royalties, they can't figure out how to track and 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 tax people in a legitimate way. Pretty much anything DeFi. They've got, you know, the centralized exchanges, they make you do KYC, you know, they make they make you turn in reports. I just did my taxes earlier this year and they make you report all that. Fine, no problem. If I'm if I'm making money and I'm living in the United States and I'm contributing to the to the, you know, GDP and stuff like that, I have no problem paying my taxes. Uh, I don't, th this is why I don't think that the regulations will be too restrictive. I mean, the, 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 one of the regulators for the FCC, I forget her name. She was a female. She came out publicly and said, look, we don't need to be squashing this. We need to be, we can regulate it to make sure everybody's safe and that there aren't all these rugs and things like that. But we don't need it to be so restrictive that that people go elsewhere to do their crypto projects to where they're going. Okay, we can't we can't bring business to the United States. So it's 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 a tough balance, and I don't know where they'll end up. But again, this is why I actually don't think that we will lose NFT royalties, and this is also why I think eventually the government will figure out some way to monitor. All of that, because I mean, again, let's face it, it's on the blockchain. It's public knowledge. Anybody can go look it up. They've got AI computers now that could theoretically, you know, search the blockchain and and, and stuff like that. But it's harder in DeFi, obviously. Yes. It's not going through yeah. a central server, you know, where they can just audit right. everything that's coming in and out. You, you have to go out. You have to go out and look for it instead of it coming to you. Well, it's not, but it kind of is, right? Because the blockchain houses all of the data it's just you can't associate any wallet with one any one person like nobody knows that you know 7j 9l 20 more letters is my wallet personally and i can always at the drop of the hat i can just you know close that send it to another wallet and reopen it um i mean but i don't know i'll shut up now no 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 <laughs> Sorry. It, it's good it's good it's, it's I'll call out one other key issue in all of this, and this is the reason why the government wants you to send transaction IDs, is the blockchain is massive, and it's not really indexed. So it's a stateful system, which means it's not really providing you trends and in, in all of the history. It's available, but to go and get all of the information, basically to query the blockchain is damn near impossible unless you already know the transactions you're looking for, the policies you're looking for, or the assets that you're looking for. Uh, so it is actually a massive challenge for them just to take the blockchain as it is and then try to figure out how much to tax people on. Uh, just assume that they had some connection between an individual and their wallet or wallets. It still can't quite be done just because of the compute resources required to be able to go through every transaction on the blockchain and read it in. Rather, they would have to have something set up so that transactions are passed through their system so that they can basically store that information and then use it later on to figure out how much to tax on. Dead air. Gee. <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff to think about, man. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the CIP 68 that Price brought up earlier. So, man. Damn. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't even mean to get so high level, but uh, unfortunately, I got to go to a meeting. The background. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see if it would play through. I just got it working on my system. I'm I'm running like an emulator. Uh, anyway, yeah, I that was really a <laughs> yeah. nice. Did you say you were taking off, Price? Yeah, I got to go to a meeting right now. Unfortunately, some sort of touch base that somebody decided to schedule over my lunch hour. Oh, man. Well, you tell them well, you're busy. On by, man. Tell, them you're, tell them you're busy on the Twitter space, man. Just uh, uh, yeah, they're gonna love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, man, hopefully, take, uh, it's take it short. Easy. I can join back. Again. All right, fun. man. All right. Well, there we go. So maybe back, back to the maybe back to the original topic. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Kay. Oh, sorry, I wasn't I wasn't showing up that I'm. Um, my thoughts, and I put the thoughts into that was um, if 
I were to uh, approach it, or hey, hey, KB, KB, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you you sound like you're a little far away. Is there any way that you can put your uh, no, nope, there isn't because I'm only on my phone because Twitter sucks. Oh, okay. Yep, I got you. I got you. Sorry, I just. All right, go ahead. It's it's just kind of hard. Uh, under- I make it short. I make it short. Um, I think prices will mid prices will rise if price is another way. I didn't catch any. Do we have it? Did you guys get that? Mint prices will rise if what? Mint prices will rise if there's no royalties. Is that what he's saying? Could be. (laughs) Yes, thumbs up. up. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Mint prices will rise. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, he brings up a good point because they're going to have to build in the future expectations of royalties into the mint price to be able to, like he was talking about before, uh, the Dow tokens, um, if they want to be able to compensate for the upkeep and the ongoing things, they'll have to take that out of the initial mint. So good point, KB. We got Moody coming up as well. Moody from the Knights Guild. This will probably affect them as well. Hello, Moody. He's connecting. He's, oh, he's coming in. He's connecting. All right. <laughs> there he is. What's up, Moody? Good evening, my friends. How is everyone tonight? Good. Good. Excellent. How are you? Yeah. yeah good. Thanks. I I, I want to. I, I just wanted to jump in because I've got to drop out at six, but but it wouldn't be a, a Twitter space if I didn't give my my opinion. Uh, <laughs> so so I have really mixed views on royalties. So I, in in my mind I can see it really impacting um artists um who are actually pr- producing material and stuff like that and 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 I think that the, there will be a solution for that eventually. But I also think it could benefit a lot of projects because there are a number of projects out there as we know which which just when you re- when you look at it they haven't really got any utility. And, you know, I think there's a lot of false promises on royalties being reinvested and all of that kind of stuff. So, so I actually think if, if it is an option um, to, to, you know, where, where royalties are discounted, I actually think it will make some of, some of the space a bit better because there is a lot of copy and paste projects. And, you know, I, I just think... <laughs> It will drive the economy to be much well NFTs to be much more utility based rather than royalty based. So, so I, I see two sides to it, but I, I do really sympathise for for really good artists and uh, uh, you know who are, who are producing quality stuff. That that could be really impacting, but I think it could have a bit of a benefit to some areas. I think so. Uh... Yeah, I, I guess if you look at it from an art point of view, I think the royalties are probably the best. But if you're using it as a utility for some reason, I don't know if a, if a royalty would even be necessary, like you like you were saying. You know, this brings up kind of a, a, an interesting thing. I mean, in the real world, if you sell a painting that an artist did, you don't pay royalties back to the original artist, right? I mean, they, well, they, they sell it their first. I mean, they get their money and then it's kind of done, right? I think, yeah, yeah. That, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, you, you, it, it, when when a when a, a baseball card sold for you know hundreds of thousand dollars at some convention or something, they don't send a check to Tops. <laughs> no. Um, so you know, I mean, I I get the continuing thing. I, I guess I guess in music, uh, or well, I guess more in TV. Right. In TV, you have a, a show and you get paid to do it and it gets released and then you get paid again when it goes into syndication. So I guess that would be the closest thing to the royalty system that we have. I'm just trying to look at precedents and, and how other well, I, markets. I, I think in the music industry, it, it, it needs to be it needs to be there because, you know, I buy a song uh, from seven or a wrap off seven and he gets the money, but then I can go ahead and duplicate it as many times as I want. Just give it away for free. No, you know, that's where it comes no, in. No, no, no. We're not talking about duplicating. We're well, talking about if you download that one file and he only allows you to download that file once, and then you sell that one file to somebody else, you no longer have it, but somebody else has it. 
So we're not talking about duplicating. That's, that's, that's different. That's like counterfeiting and yeah, that's no good. But if, if the asset, if you're, as long as you're not duplicating, all you did is transfer the asset from you to another person. Right. Do you think you should have to pay royalties right. on that? If you send me a song, but you I, no I longer have so. it. I, I think so. I think, I think if, uh, well, I don't know. It's kind of hard because it's, it's You're like, confusing me with the music one well, because no. you have to pay royalties to use music in a movie or something. But if I sell you my right. Beatles CD, I don't, I don't have to pay royalties. That, that's, that's my point. Yeah. Right. Like you have a hard copy CD and Freiler sell you his Beatles CD. Do you think that he should have to send money to the Beatles? Not if not unless not not unless they put the song on TV or on the radio or something like that. Right, that's like, that's a licensing thing. Right, right. At that point, can that be yeah, built? Into I agree. A, can that be built into a smart contract? Well, I don't know. I know that I know I know you can't use uh, music on YouTube, but you know unless you have what a about license. for one of the one question that I had now. Uh, is how are you paying these artists? You know what I mean? For, I don't know if you guys can speak on it for like the Knights or the Corn Mafia. You guys must have had artists for your NFTs that you sold. Would it have affected your negotiations with them if they weren't getting royalties down the road? Would you have to pay them more up front? I don't get any royalties. So, so, so the, the Knights NFTs, we, we've paid up front for the artwork on our current NFTs. And the royalties from those NFT secondaries goes into the guild um, operating. Oh, okay, uh, it doesn't go to the artists, of course. But, gotcha. but, but, but going forward, I mean, we're, we're, we're in discussions with, with some art studios because we, we actually want to go into a partnership on a royalty-based partnership. For reason being, I think it, if, it, I mean, we... For our first series, Complete Night series, we're, we're going to need in the region of 20 NFTs. And we want no 20 pieces of art, sorry. And we want that art to actually be really, really high quality. We want it to look like a series. We want, we want to get the artist to have some skin in the game and to provide like um, side art to support competitions and stuff like that. And it, it, if if that NFT partnership is based on royalties, I think the artist is going to have a lot more skin in the game um, because he or she or, or the studio knows that if they produce high quality, they're going to get a better return. So I think royalties can be used to really incentivize stronger partnerships. But to date, to answer your question, no, we've just bought the artwork and and uh, retained the royalties in the guild. Well, gotcha. and in this book, oh, go ahead. I was going to say that still answered my question in a way because uh, it it was the same thing. You know, obviously, uh, you're going to get a more involved artist if they're making more off those royalties. So I think there's a lot that go in there. I was just thinking of like the Alley Cats. They had four million in volume and I can't remember what they quoted their artist got, but he got all those royalties from it. So you know that he is invested in this project. And if they ask for a season two, he's just going to absolutely, you know, destroy it. So good point. Well, and not only that, but think about the projects that don't have a lot of upfront money, right? That can't afford to pay an artist hardly anything upfront by offering those royalties. I mean, I, I get it. You could do a, a, a package where you're going, okay, we'll give you part of the sales. But if you've got it in royalties, they know they've got that kind of reoccurring revenue. I don't know. I, I do know there's different ways to structure it. As as Moody pointed out, they're paying theirs up front. I've heard of other ones that take almost nothing up front and they only get the royalties. So different ways to skin the cat. Yeah, absolutely. Leave my cat out of this, please. So where are we gonna <laughs> where are we gonna bring this conversation now? This this is this Man, is I'm, a, I'm... this is a tough one. So you know, I'm yeah, just... we're we're like way off in the weeds now about it. Well, uh, it's okay. We can we can travel around. That's a, that's all right. I, I think I think it's a really interesting concept you brought up at the front. I mean, bringing it back to Cornucopius, you know, the, the Cornucopius is a, is a solid project, and that their revenue and how they've structured their business, and the reason they've got so much resilience in their business is because they've got multiple sensible revenue streams. And 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 like back to my point, I think 
I think if if there is any changes to how royalties are are applied or, or or whether it's optional or not going forward, I actually think it will make a lot more of these projects in the crypto space more resilient because you'll have to think a lot more about your income and your revenue stream rather than just saying, oh, we're going to get royalties. Because good projects sometimes take ages to start getting that secondary uh, re revenue from royalties. You know, and you know, it, it will make a project think a lot more business-minded on, on their finance. And so, yeah, but Cornucopius, I think that they're so well-structured. They've got, they've got multiple revenue streams, and, and, and I think that's an example of how projects should be run. Yeah, I agree. I don't I don't have any concern really when it comes to Cornucopius as it being like, you know, something devastating that's going to happen. I just wondered how it might affect them. But, you know, I've, I'm wondering about your other point, Moody, about making the community or making projects uh, more responsible or making them think. Uh, do you think that's going to happen or do you think the community is just going to keep paying for bad projects for people that didn't plan well? <laughs> So, 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 so I, I, this is as we know it. So, so this is such a new space, and and I think unfortunately there are a lot of bad actors who just totally rebadge what they've done and get a whole new kind of like website, a whole new Discord, and just drag and drop the same concept, and then either let the project fail or move on and get interest elsewhere. So, so I think the more the more projects are forced to be better structured and better open about their finances because the community is getting more experienced, I think it'll be better for the space and I think it'll be harder for some of these bad actors to actually just turn up and with a load of like NFTs as their like team leadership page, Bob57 from London or something, you know. I, I think it'll actually benefit the project space because the community is getting a little bit more wise to this. I, I wonder about that too. And I agree. I see, I see more people talking like that, you know, uh, more people in the community wising up, but it seems to be those of us who have been around for two years and we're still getting floods of new people that still follow the same old route that we all started in, which is, you know, just full degen, mint everything, everything is going to the moon, best community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, every project's got it. So, uh, not to be the contrary in there. I, I do see us moving forward. I just, I don't think we're doing it enough. I wish people would be more selective when it comes to projects. Like I can't even believe half the stuff that mints out, you know, honestly, I'm baffled by it sometimes. So I really think that we, we need to grow a lot in that respect still. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Well, I mean, I, I, I think there are some spaces out there like Cardano over coffee. When you go and talk on that, on that Twitter space, they absolutely grill you on your your finances on your team on the experience of the team you know and and i think i think the communities will start hopefully start embedding more kind of like 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 self-policing you know and and like spaces like cardano coffee over cardano they're setting the example of the kind of questions the community should be asking projects. I went on there the other week and I was expecting to get absolutely grilled on the finances, blah, 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 blah. And I, th I think they were kind of taken aback about a gaming guild and all they wanted to talk about was gaming, which was great. But spaces like that will will make an inexperienced community a little bit more aware of what they should be asking. So I think it, we, we can be a bit more self-policing as a community. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Well, come, coming back to the the royalty thing, we're going to go around in circles. I think today, what what happens if if a project starts off with royalties and okay, for for instance, let's take a, a game like Cornucopius, but not Cornucopius. Take a game that sells skins and things like that for their characters and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Is it <laughs> bless you? <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Do do they get, you know, if if their if their skins are sold or whatever for a character, and his royalties going back to the artist now, can no can those skins be used if they're wrapped so the royalties are no longer? I mean, how is that? Jeez, well, you know, we lost price, but I think uh, part of the process of wrapping something is is going to be sending it to that smart contract, the original asset. 
And then you get back a wrapped asset, which is actually a different asset, right? It's like a placeholder. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, like I said, excuse me for my ignorance. Brian, in, in, think the, of it. In this, so, yeah. Think of it like chips when you go to a casino, right? Ooh, yes. You give them money, they give you chips. And then at some point, the idea is you can either just walk around and keep them in chips for as long as you want, or you can trade those back in for the original asset, i.e. money. I can do that as at a casino? Like you can get yeah. money back from the yeah. casino? No, <laughs> yeah. well, I, I realize that that doesn't happen very often. I, you I know, always get chips but... at a casino and I don't leave with any. I didn't know I could. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, Come on. Not, if you... If you get that swing, and you, and you have, <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to bust out with that, Moody. I knew you were. Well, <laughs> if somebody would invite me to play poker, I, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I, I'm not too good at it, but I'll give it a shot. So if, you, if you're going to have a night skilled poker poker league, let me know, Moody. I'll, I'll give it a shot. Oh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> so, okay. So it's like poker, but uh, okay, it's like chips and you and you continue continue with your train of thought thought there that was it pretty much it's oh. it's just chips you trade it, you, those are markers to represent money right right and when you wrap a token you're essentially getting a marker to represent an asset an okay. nft or something okay. like that yeah all right all right yeah the, the nft wrapping had, had tripped me up earlier too stein i'd only really heard of tokens being wrapped and moved around that way so I, i'm glad that you asked a bunch of questions about it because i also didn't quite understand how you could move a wrapped NFT asset around to avoid royalties. But uh, again, yeah, I'm more familiar with people wrapping the tokens and moving them. Seem like a more simpler concept to wrap your head around. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Yes, sir, man. All right. Who's up next? How about Tizzy? Is Tizzy, Tizzy, uh, Tizzy, Tizzy's up here, right? Hello, gentlemen. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, I was, I guess I have more of a question of um, Cornucopius will eventually have its own marketplace, I assume, to where if I want to get involved with Cornucopius, I wouldn't even have to go to like a JPEG store. I would just go to their marketplace. And I guess it's a bigger project. Um, I guess, you know, the smaller projects would really be affected with the no royalties, but going forward, like um, the bigger blue chip projects, you know, I already see people creating in the space, their own marketplaces for their projects. I'm assuming Cornucopius will have their, their own marketplace. Like uh, what does the future look like, you know, going forward, you know, um, kind of don't know how to say this cause I'm a little inexperienced with this topic, but uh. What does Cornucopius look like moving forward? Like, uh, will I even have to go on JPEG store? I'll tell you what I think, if you're interested. I think they're going to be in the domes. I think people, and, and maybe even in the public areas, you're going to be able to open up a store, essentially, a storefront. And I think there will be multiple marketplaces, you know, that, that people are buying, selling, trading NFTs. Yeah, and I think uh, Tizzy also just made a good point too. Uh, obviously, right now, all of these uh, royalties are being enforced on the marketplace. So very valid point I hadn't even thought of. Cornucopius is going to have their own whole marketplace, so they very well could enforce royalties on their own marketplace if they wanted to. Well, they could also allow us, if I own a store and it's an NFT store, they could uh, allow the owner of the store to decide whether or not to enforce royalties or not. I mean, I don't know, just a thought, but Moody's got his hand up. Yes, yeah, so so we, we, if so, two points. So, so first of all, we've already got platforms out there like Atomic Swap, where you can swap NFTs for NFTs or you can swap NFTs for ADA. And the only fee you pay is a flat rate. I think it's one ADA per transition transaction. So that, that functionality is already on Cardano, which totally skips royalties. Um, the second point, if you look at, I mean, I, I mentioned World of Warcraft, I think, every half hour in, in, in the moment. But if you look at World of Warcraft, where in-game you could open your your inventory and one of the other players could open could could log into that and there was almost like a swap functionality in your 
in your backpack as such. And that, again, is almost like a smaller version of that atomic swap platform. So I, I think we'll see that at a much more um, like granular level to allow people just to swap from their wallet to another wallet with almost like a little bridge in between. So I think royalties could very quickly, even without like the marketplaces, I think a lot of these games and stuff and, and these swap platforms, I think it's already happening, to be honest. See, the salesman in me says, I understand where you're coming from. There's no freaking way. Look, how long has sales been, been a profession? Anybody want to tell me that? Since a uh, caveman came out of the cave and had something another caveman wanted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I quit selling cars 20 years ago, probably 20 years ago. I'm not counting. Uh, but I bet you I could walk right back into it tomorrow. And while the Internet and, and, and the ease of buying a car have certainly gotten changed and gotten better, the fact remains that a salesman still earn commissions. That's never going to change no matter what market you get in. And I don't care if it's decentralized or not, right? What you're describing, Moody, is, is like a concierge or convenience fee, right? It, it, it's, it's a fee just for doing business. That's not a commission. And they're different, okay? And every business and everything you buy that there's a sales force, there is a commission and then there is a service fee. So the service fee is absolutely never going anywhere, and it'll always be some really tiny, insignificant amount so that you, the consumer, don't notice it. Um, as far as, as royalties go, well, you know, that's fine if every project wants its own marketplace. But why were places like JPEG and, and, and OpenSea uh, started in the very first place? Because there needed to be a, 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 a social meeting place that everybody goes to when they want to buy a particular type of asset, that what's for sale, like a flea market. Those things are always going to be needed. It's just a matter of where is the hot spot now? It's kind of like my buddy Scruffy over there told me one day. It's like a nightclub. Right. Every three or four years, you got to shake it up, change the change the drapes and paint the walls and maybe the name and, and, you know, come up with a new drink and get a new act or something just to freshen things up. But guess what? At the very heart of it, it's still the same business. I'm out. Mic drop. <laughs> He's like, I'm uh, out. <laughs> so, so what is. What does that have to do with Cardano losing royalties? If I could just bring it back to that, I I think I might have missed the point. I don't think he was making a point about Cardano royalties, was he? I think he was oh, just, okay. I think well, he was just okay. continuing, no, no, no. continuing on. I can our... answer that. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Cardano's not going to lose royalties. In fact, they'll probably make more because royalties aren't going anywhere. So if you look at what just happened on ETH, though, uh, marketplace opened up with no royalties and then they stole the 90 percent market share from open sea how long uh it's been over like the past three months three months all right if you're the project head and you're not taking a commission and you're moving millions of dollars it, it's just like when back in the day when the internet started and they gave you those free aol things or or when you when you switch cable or phone companies that give you a trial trust me they're going to start charging fees at some point. Whether you see them or not is a different story, but they're going to make their money. The platform still charges platform fees. What they're yeah. doing is not enforcing creative royalties. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I feel for, uh, for the projects that need them and don't have anywhere else to go. Uh, you yeah, know, but you it's don't, a free market. You, you, don't have do to, they want, but. you don't have to put your NFTs on there, right? I mean... No. no, and people, people, you know, people that are listing a, an individual NFT here and there probably don't really notice the royalties that much. Um, somebody who does a lot of them, sure. Somebody who who who's a, a whale or a flipper or, you know, uh, an, a big 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 dog, yeah, of course they're going to complain. They're greedy, but um, projects, you know what? They created the asset that you want, really. Do you not pay sales tax when you go buy a fucking new shirt? No. Yeah, you do. I don't. 
<laughs> I, don't, uh, I live in New Hampshire. There's no sales tax. <sighs> but that's, you that's, live in that's, the a, moot, that's a moot, that's a moot that, point anyways. You live in the one stick that doesn't have that. <laughs> but I bet your real estate taxes are stupid high. Oh, no, don't even start there. Yeah, of course they are because we don't pay any other taxes. Of course, they're freaking skyrocketing. They're, they're horrendous. So if you don't pay it one way, you'll pay it another way. Absolutely. I was going to bring that up. But I, you know, because there's a lot of, I saw on 60 Minutes, I don't know, probably last summer or something like that about these young, I think it was 60 Minutes or one of those, one of those shows, these, these young, young artists. I mean, they're like 12 and 13 14 years old that are making millions of dollars by making NFTs because of the royalties and the sales on them. So I, I just, I just don't, I don't, I don't know if something like that is going to, is going to last like, like, <clears throat> like Ninja was saying, it's, it's, uh, I mean, they, if they're making a small commission, but who's going to, who's going to put their stuff there? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand their, 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 their business, their, their business, because there's no royalties. I mean, I guess it's good for utility NFTs or utility tokens or, I, I, geez, I, I don't know. I don't know why anybody would want to sell stuff there. Unless they're just trying to rip people off, I don't know. Am I, am I okay? Wrong? Can I jump in real quick here? Yeah, man. At least how I see it. Um, sorry, I just ran from the other room, so I'm a little out of breath. But uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, my mic when when I'm signed in on my on my computer and I try to listen to it in there, I can listen, but I can't talk on in there. Oh, okay. And. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm by no means an NFT expert as far as this goes. But as Friler was mentioning, I did read the article about the new marketplace that opened up that had zero royalties. And I believe that it is not in the project maker's hand to do the royalties. It's on the marketplace, which like on JPEG, anytime something's bought or sold, they, they send 5% to a wallet. That when you create or, well, we'll just call it a wallet. That when you, you know, create your project on their platform, then that's built in. But if you create your project on any other platform and people buy and sell it on another marketplace that doesn't charge royalties, as best I know, the creator doesn't have any say over that. So here's my question. If you're a buyer and you have the choice between two marketplaces, one where you have to pay an extra 5% to get an NFT, and then another marketplace that has those same NFTs, but you don't have to pay the 5%, where are you going? Well, 90% of the market has spoken and said, yeah, we don't want to pay the extra 5% if we don't have to. So essentially, and I brought this up to Pinball the other day, I sat there and I said, look, if somebody is watching this, and I know they are, somebody is going to start a marketplace on Cardano and do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So I, will Cardano lose NFT royalties? No, Cardano won't. But could, could another you know, group come in and make a site that has zero royalties and everybody flocks to that because they don't have to pay the extra 5%? Absolutely. And then will JPEG, again... We don't know what OpenSea is going to do. I've read lots of things about how they're going to try and combat this and, you know, things like that. But they're going to have to do something if if they don't want their business to close. And JPEG would have to do the same thing. Anyway, I'll shut up now and let you guys well, isn't marinate it, on that. I, 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 well, I, won't it be like creative – doesn't Creative Commons sell sell their artwork, right? Like if you, if you want to buy something, you can buy it over there. I mean, won't, won't artists – just go to the ones where they can sell it with a royalty at first. Yeah. And they get that first royalty and then people buy it. And then when, when, when a customer that has bought an NFT wants to go sell it, they go sell it on the one that doesn't have royalties. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're going to mint out their project, right. And then royalties come from the secondary market. So that's where their higher price will come in right off the bat is be like, well, I'm not going to make royalties after one shot. So I might as well charge more in the beginning. 
I think that's what Moody was yeah. saying earlier when he was <laughs> making that point. Yeah. And and one of the points that they've made too is that there's there are already ways to sidestep the royalties, but I, it was Pinball or Scruffy brought it up. It's just it's the way the free market works. Where is everybody selling at, and that's where the buyers are going to go. So, and the, the other point that Scruffy brought up too is they shifted the way that you pay the royalties. So on Cardano right now, if you want to go and sell an NFT on JPEG Store, when you click in your price before you confirm it, it's going to tell you. Here's your set price. Here's what we're taking. Here's what you're going to end up with. And it's the seller that's paying the royalties. That's now, fair. the way that it works on Magic Eden, and I believe that they'd probably shift it again, is the buyer gets the option. So when you're buying, you can choose this price or you can choose to add 5%. Who's going to choose to add 5%? Uh, the other thing is that, Scruffy, I just wanted to, to correct. Uh, you, you mentioned that, that when a NFT project is uh, listed on JPEG that that they set the the royalties. That's not true. Um, when we did our first DAO, we chose to go with the minimum uh, royalty, which was two percent. On the second DAO, we're at five percent because there's there's just not a lot of volume. No, no, no. I get I get that the project sets what royalty they want. But I'm saying it's all controlled through that marketplace. So if if you set, you know, what you want to what did you, where's the royalty set? Is it set when you mint or is it set on the marketplace itself? It, it's set when you get your policy IDs and all that. Oh, okay. Okay. So that means no matter where you take it, like if it was sold on another platform, does that mean that they would have to take the five percent also? I don't know. I don't think we have any plans to leave JPEG. I I get that that I'm just trying to hypothetically say if this same thing happened on Cardano and somebody wanted to do a zero royalty uh in there to to get people trading on their platform if somebody bought and sold one of the mafia tokens on there would you guys receive royalties? Do I have no idea. Too? Okay, gotcha. Okay, no, so, I would never use a site like that myself. All right. Well, what if what if uh, say say somebody in the guild wanted to just say I wanted to sell my DAO token to, to Scruffy, but not through JPEG. Is is there any way of getting royalties that way? No. Is, is there is there, or or is it built well, in? Well, I mean, theoretically, no, I was going to say I don't think it can be because if you wanted to just send me that that nft and i wanted to just send you ada right is they don't take five percent right. for that no no I wouldn't, no I wouldn't think so so it has to be done through the platform exactly that was that was the point that me and price made earlier is that you can't enforce it just on chain through your nft project it has to be enforced by the marketplace correct okay all right, it's clearing my brain up a little bit now 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 i'm getting around to figuring out what this is all about Right. It's only taking me an hour, but I'm, I'm starting to starting to get it. <laughs> so, yeah. So these other places, they, they just like, OK, well, you give us the money. We'll give you the, the NFT and we're just taking a little piece out. That's it. And that's what they're doing. They're just swapping, swapping currency for NFTs. Right. And just taking a little bit off the top for themselves. Or whatever percentage. Yeah, they charge the platform fee and then, uh, you know, send the creator royalty fees off to the wallet that they set. So, yeah, so the, uh, the only way the creator is going to get that one time, that, that royalty is that, is like if, I, if I'm going to mint, if I'm going to mint something, I'm going to put it on JPEG. That's the only time I'm I have a question the royalty unless know. somebody resells it on, on JPEG. I just want to point yeah. out one thing. There are two feet when, when you sell an NFT on JPEG. There are two fees you are charged as a seller. One is the uh, royalty for the NFT project you are selling. The other is the uh, um, kind of privilege fee for for their for their platform, the convenience fee, the whatever you want to call it. And JPEG is generally one percent. Some sometimes it's a little more than that, depending on the royalty percentage. I think, but. But generally speaking, it's about a th it's about one percent for JPEG, right? So it's up to the the uh, project 
when they set it up, as I said a minute ago, what percentage are going to charge? Okay. So whether or not one of these platforms that does not uh, force royalties uh, would succeed long term or not remains to be seen. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, very well. Could be. We haven't had enough time yet. But yeah, there's a lot going on too. Uh, even Magic Eden temporarily took down their platform fees as well. So you're just trading for free on their platform. You know, I mean, maybe they'll go back to charging fees. Maybe they'll completely tank their competition in the meantime, or maybe who knows? Well, here's my question. If they're not charging, well, if they're completely charging no fees at all, I can understand not doing the royalties. Okay, I get that because they're still charging their what Pinball Ninja called convenience fee or whatever, platform fee, we'll just call it. Uh, how is the platform making money? Through advertising? That's Because that's the only other way I could see um, them making money. Maybe through minting well, tech? Well, they were, they were very clear to say that they temporarily disabled. Ah, uh, so yeah. It's okay. not a permanent feature yet. It's a temporary disable to try to claw back some of that market share because they're worried about it, because they're being <laughs> spanked. Yeah. I would be too. Well, so yeah, I know. I mean, it, it's it's yet to be decided if one of these marketplaces will survive. But as we've already seen, it can be very volatile in the NFT marketplace space. Uh, CNFT.io had majority market share until they went completely <laughs> under. So uh, I mean, it could happen to JPEG. It could happen to anyone. Or maybe these new marketplaces uh maybe everyone dumps their token that they got awarded the price completely fails and then the marketplace goes under eventually too well i think i think that if they have a business and they can figure out how to how to make money they'll 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 do it <laughs> you know whether it's and have, having the rare nfts like you know having certain projects if you come if you come to us first you know to, to sell your nft you know we can do something, you know, some, some, somehow. We're, you know. we're about to, even if we don't get that marketplace, like me and Scruffy think is going to happen. I'm sure somebody's building it now. I'm absolutely Agreed. sure. Agreed. But, They're already working on it. Hey, Fryler, I have a question for you real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. D d am I crazy or do, do I remember reading? They also did a whole bunch of airdrops for people that had X amount of trades or, 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 or some sort of, staking rewards for for their token but uh, yeah do you remember no, how that worked out so the way blur did it was apparently they just did it over like three different drops and they're rewarding people for trading on the platform so this yeah. is one of the points that we hadn't got to yet but i was just about to say it in, in what i was about to say because we're we're getting a bunch of shakeups here on cardano even without that same marketplace we got plutus art coming we've got flipper both of those are offering a trading token or a token for trading on their platform. And then JPEG also just teased their coin as well. And you guys are probably already familiar. They're famous for starting shit with these other marketplaces. And they were going to, you know, Fettuccini posted that they had threatened to call the SEC on them for releasing a token and all this stuff. Well, all three marketplaces that we're about to have this month on Cardano will also be releasing a trading token as well. And it's had a lot of other effects inside the market, aside from getting people over to their platform. Now you have... Uh, I can't remember if it was Magic Eden or which one, but in essence, I'll just explain kind of what happened without giving you the exact facts. You can go look it up if you want. But what happens is the volume has gone way up. There's way more NFTs being traded on a daily basis, but there's less individual traders. So you have whale accounts that are just buying and selling and trading their own assets to token farm. And so it's it's really destroyed project floors. A lot of the floors got a lot lower, which... I don't really care about myself, but you all know that as soon as floors start going down, the whole community is going to set fire to Twitter. So uh, a lot of stuff going on. And I just want to mention that, yeah, we're, we're about to see some huge shakeups in Cardano, I think, especially with the two new marketplaces that we have launching this month. Actually, one just launched in February. We're in March now. One launches this month, one launched last month. I always worry about these marketplaces and, and stuff like that, you know, after FTX and all that crap. You know, it's the uh, Voyager FTX. <clears throat> Man, you know, what, what, I, I'm what a DJ. Are, what, and I just want what, my JPEG token. Well, yeah, <laughs> but you know, you gotta gotta think. 
you know, with their with their business model, you know, what's what's the real business behind it? Is it just to rug everybody? At, you know, just, um, that's what's so terrifying well, about the crypto space. Who would have known that FTX was coming for you? You know, I mean, they almost got they yeah. swapped. It got BlockFi. I mean, we we had a bunch of near misses even in our community. To be fair, they were what I would consider a rug. Okay, what they did is misappropriate funds, and they also didn't have as much collateral as they said they've had, like you know, um, Luna, and and that caused it to collapse because there was a bank run. So, you know, I, not that they're not that what they did was okay, but to me, a rug is somebody that starts a project knowing that they're just gonna basically take everybody for everything they've got. Yeah, I guess I probably and again. Should stated that wrong I'm not a rug as in you know but misappropriations I, I don't I didn't have another word for it at the time so but it happens in the real world too I mean let's look at look at Enron you know I mean it, so any any time that a business starts there is that risk there's some sort of risk you know I love I love the states that say gambling is illegal here in the United States <laughs> but then but you want to do the stock market? Oh, okay, sure. There you go. That's like the biggest gamble out there. But it's always a gamble. Like I said, I think people definitely have to do their own research on all of these things. And it's tough, right? Because we've got all these emerging technologies and we've got new platforms coming up and we've got these things. But the people that put more time and effort into researching are going to be making a little bit better decisions. So, so I urge everybody, if you're thinking about putting real money towards something, just do as much research as you can. Look at the team. Look at the people that you're investing in and make sure that you feel good about it before you do that because it's all a, kind of a crapshoot. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, you're right. Even even definitely doing your, your due diligence and researching as best you can is not always going to end up in a win, but it's going to be better odds than if you just went in blind. That's true. But I don't know. I, I'm always... I can't figure out what the hell anybody's ever saying anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. I'm always, I'm going in blind whether people are saying, hey, you know, this is a good, you know, could you get, everybody always wants to find that new, that new shiny toy to play with, and hopefully they can make money on it. And so we all try to do our best to figure it out, <laughs> but, you know, by watching yeah. YouTube or whatever, or reading articles and, you know, but there's always so much behind them. You know, there's always so much behind these projects. You know, it's like betting on sports. Yeah, I, this team's going to win. I know it. And they, they don't for some reason. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, I like that analogy because it, it is a lot just like sports. Because some of us are here looking at the team, looking at the track record, and then basing our decisions off that. While a lot of people are out here like, I like their colors more. I vote for them. Oh, well, the odds! People look, look at the odds. I can, I can, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet on these ponies or whatever. I'm gonna bet on these ones because I get a higher, higher value off my trifecta if these. You think an eagle can beat a bear? No. No, you know, it's 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 how gambling always works. I don't know. know. Are they playing? Uh, are they playing in the water or are they playing on land? Right. Who's the <laughs> you know, is it raining? <laughs> what's, what's the temperature outside? You know, it's. it's there's so many variables and it is kind of gambling. I mean, we're all gambling. I mean, a stock market is just gambling. Right? But again, it's educated guest gambling also. Right. I mean, to me, there's a lot more research out there I, in a, in a sports event. I'll just say that, you know, I, I like to do, I like to watch football. So we'll call it on that on any given Sunday, right? A team can have a good day or a bad day, but if you're looking at, the entirety of the season and over the course of the next three to five years. That's more what we're trying to look at, right? Anybody can have some ups and some downs. You guys just go look at Kopi. It'll go up, it'll go down and all that stuff. But what we're all saying is, Hey, look, we believe in this project. Okay. And, and, and the people that go out and buy Kopi or support it or buy the NFTs or things like that, we're like, look, we think this is something that has merit. We think that it's going to be a success and we're going to go invest our, our money into it so that we can a play the game and have fun with our friends and B hopefully it's a long-term, you know, investment. Yep. And when, when you're betting on sports, I mean, even if you, if you wanted to bet on, you know, how many games the Kansas city chiefs are going to win over the next, you know, 
four years. I'm sure you could do that somewhere in Vegas. Um, but if you're betting on any individual game, the short term is seems to be a little more volatile, both in crypto and gambling. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, if you have more st statistics, st you know, statistic gambling is, you know, that's 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 when you become a bookmaker. <laughs> you know, when when you can figure out odds over a long period of time. You know, that's 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 why people getting to get into less riskier. Like, you know, like Warren Buffett and stuff like that, how when he started out, you know, he's just looked at, looked over the track record of, of companies and things like that. Well, and he buys Apple and Microsoft and like, like you said, safer companies, yeah. right? Ones that he just thinks are undervalued, but are proven. Yeah. And unfortunately, in crypto, not a lot of these have a long track record, right? I mean, like Bitcoin is the longest and it's 10 years, right? Everything yeah. else is so, so much newer. Right. Well, I mean, the stock market is the educated guess, and crypto is the degenerates that every all of us are degenerates, folks. Yeah. Let's just face it. Well, you know, it's uh, <clears throat> like most most of you know, I I moderate digital asset news, and you know, Rob over there who runs it, he always he always talks about the salt and pepper of it all, or well, something like that. He says, and basic basically. I don't. I don't think it's salt and pepper. He uses another analogy. It's salt, salt, and something. But it's like people wonder what he's talking about. And he goes, "Look at these." He said he goes back in time and he and he shows you these these two cryptos, these two tokens that were doing really well, and one of them was named Salt. Now you can't even find a damn thing. So people were like, "This is the next best." token this is the next best thing and now you can't even find it on the market marketplace or whatever it is from where it was at its all-time high so shoot if you just go back one bull run six of the top 10 coins aren't here anymore right you know i'm still waiting for that shiba you know to get to a dollar you you didn't sell at the right time damn it i did i sold it <laughs> at the right time i sold it before i went to zero well, it actually, it's under zero, but... Yeah, he's only got one left, Rattler. I mean... <laughs> I can't move it. It's still, stu it's still stuck in my wallet. I can't I got move one. it. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, you'll have to trade it in for a dog. Oh, my that, God. That goes back to what Moody said earlier, you know, that we just got to start being better as a community and being more particular about what we meant. And hopefully that'll push the people who are actually minting to do better. I don't think it's going to happen in the reverse. I think once people quit minting out crappy projects, they're going to quit trying to stuff them down our throat, which uh, it's kind of funny. We got onto this. I actually posted a tweet earlier today, which I called out an old project that I'm just not happy with. Back in 2021, they sold us 30,000 NFTs. They were one of the OG projects. Everyone loved them. They made CNFT tools, you know, like a tool we all use every day, like their project is on the front page. How could this go wrong? You know, they promised a game. They ended up not delivering the game. They quit responding in Discord and on Twitter to everyone. They started a new mint some time ago. And now today they've, or yesterday, actually, they released these vaults, which are going to be whitelists for upcoming mints. And it's like, what the hell, you guys? You sold us 30,000 NFTs, bailed on the project, had a new mint, and now you're having a whitelist mint for new projects. And I'm guessing they're just going to suck up a ton of liquidity from new people, but it's just, yeah. you hate to see it, man. These well, serial, these serial them. project makers in the space. You know what I want? And them. That's, that's, that's. Who are they? Yeah. Who are they? <laughs> Cardinos. Oh. CNFT tools. Right. And I agree. I agree with what Freiler's saying and what Moody was saying. You know, I mean, that's what a free market is all about, Right. The good stuff, the cream rises to the top, and the ones that aren't good products or fade, they they fall away, and then and then they're gone. And I think just us doing things like this, discussing it in Twitter spaces, talking about it in Discord and chats, the word spreads which ones are the good ones and which ones aren't. And just over time, it'll naturally work itself out. I think so. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm just being impatient. <laughs> Tizzy, what's up, man? Hey, um, I was thinking that like a, with Cardano, regarding Cardano, I really love the Cardano community. A lot of people are uh, creating projects, not just to profit off of, but to help others. 
um, I think royalties are important also because you're attracting artists to the space, you're attracting projects to the space. One thing I love, you know, NFTs have a stigma to them. One thing, one NFT I really love is the NFT tree, you know, and it's charity. And if you buy the NFT tree, that royalty goes into planting another tree, you know, and are we handicapping ourselves in um, not allowing projects like that to even exist? Yeah, I think I think that's one of the points that it's kind of stifling growth in a way, especially when you look at like the way trading's happening on those marketplaces. Again, it's it's mostly just whales trading and inflating the volume. It's not bringing in new people. We're not, and like you said, we're not going to attract great artists and we're not going to attract great projects if we rule those things out, or there's potential there at least. I it's have another question. Market. Oh. It's Go just ahead. Healthy. Yeah, profit is not a dirty word. Whether whether a, a project is is using those royalties to to benefit humanity or to continue building a product, or or unfortunately just put it in their pocket, profits. And there's not it's not dirty to say the word profit. We're all here ultimately. We're all here because we're investors too. We want to have fun and do something we like, but it make money at the end of the day. I, I, I yeah I. If 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 it's just going to be whales trading, then yeah, it hurts everybody. Yes, sir. I think I think you know it's it's. Geez, they had that. Uh, man, where was I going with this train of thought? Take it, take it, Fryler. My my train of thought got a little bit off off track. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> his train got derailed. Yeah, it got, I, it, it got, de it got derailed. I absolutely hate when that happens. Uh, sometimes I just mumble until I find my point again, or just pick up a new one. But yeah, just I just was, go ahead and just admit. It's yeah, no, I, I had I had to admit it. My train of thought just just went 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 completely away. I didn't even know it's, what it's I was going to say. I was just I just I know opened it, my mouth like I had something planned, and it didn't go anywhere. The answer <laughs> fell off the wheel, kid. Jesus. I wish that you would at least remember before you start speaking, but I, it's normally two words in, and you're like, actually, I don't have a guy yeah, in my head. Let me tell you exactly <laughs> what I'm thinking right now, and it's nothing. I'm thinking nothing. So, yeah. So, yeah, we got I did that with Scrooge the other day, and we were having a conversation, and he was like, well, what do you think about that? And I started to talk, and then I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. So yeah, we got about six minutes left on today's show. So uh, does anybody else want to bring up anything? And uh, any uh, any any last any last thoughts on the subject? I have a question. It's I mean it's not it's not really related, but it's kind of somewhat tangent. If you want to, has anybody else tried the uh, new lace pre prod wallet? Oh, I think there's somebody in here. I don't want to call them by name. I'm. A, I'm. No, I, who I, you are? You're a tester. Come say something. Today, no, it's open now. It's, oh, it's I, open. I, I went and downloaded it today. You can just go to the Lace website, and uh, you can go get some drips. And I have, uh, let's see, it's uh, ten thousand T Ada in my wallet, and it's kind of looking. It's, it's so it's on test net right now. Uh yes. It's well, it's on test. Yes, pre production test net. Okay. So no, when you do your early. drip. When you do your drip, make sure on the drop down you go select pre-production, not just regular test net, because I've made that mistake the first time. But okay. yeah, if you just go to, I think it's slice.io. Let me see here. Awesome. I'm actually really excited for that wallet. So uh, I, I do, I, me too. And I was debating on whether or not to do a video on it this week here. Uh, but yeah, just lace.io. And then in the top right hand corner, it says try lace on pre-prod. So. Just wanted to put that out there to see if anybody else checked it out, if they liked it or not. And if uh, you haven't, then feel free to go check it out. Maybe maybe a video coming soon. I don't know. Ooh, a little teaser. Sweet. Yeah, thank you for the heads up on that. I definitely want to go check them out. I, uh, I just want to say congrats to, uh, to Moody and, and, and the Knights uh, for their mint. I believe they sold out. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, wow, congrats, guys. We will uh, we'll be having our own mint coming up um fairly soon uh so we're excited about that excellent sweet 
Any, nice. Eric, are you you're not dropping any alpha on it? Are you gonna give us a little teaser or just leaving it at that? I would love to give you details. In fact, I am Rob right now. But I would <laughs> think that Mr. KB is probably Josh over there telling me not to say a damn thing. <laughs> that was the perfect analogy because I was just sitting there crit- I'm like, what what's what's he doing? What's he saying? Where's he going? What's happening? <laughs> Well, that was great. Well, thanks anyways. Uh, we will just wait on bated breath. Bated breath. Oh, bated breath. Never heard that one before. Or have I? You haven't? I don't know. I might That's have. That's might a have. pretty standard saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You do live pretty remote up in New Hampshire. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm remote already. got a different language up there. Yeah, I'm remote. God, I'm so remote. I can barely get I can barely get uh, gigabit Ethernet up here. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering when, uh, when was the last time you said you know you met up with your raccoon friends? Oh, springtime, man. Spring and summer. They're they're huddled down. They're huddled down for the winter. They huddle down. They don't come out too much snow. We're supposed to get a foot of snow tonight or tomorrow. Tomorrow, I think. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. Well well, I guess that means the bear is probably roaming around. No, no ba- no bears, they hibernate. Well, the groundhog surely went back in his hole. I don't see anything out here. There's, there's no animals at night. Just deer. Just deer. They, they they told me the other day that that groundhog went back in there like six more weeks of winter. I, I kid you not, the next day here, it was 77. And I'm like, well, it was, 50, dude, it was 55 here. But uh, yeah, so we're, we're, we're going to wind down now. We're under three minutes. So I just, I'm going to say thank you to everybody who showed up today. And I'm going to let uh, Fryler say thank you and say his his last words and um then we're, yeah. then we're gonna get out of here today and go enjoy the day so thanks thank you everyone for showing up go enjoy that foot of snow yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i'm not looking forward to it i'm re- i'm really not you know you gotta make sure the generator's all set and everything you never know well i'm gonna enjoy the uh 80 degrees that it is today and uh i'll think of you not for very long. Oh, man. No, don't think too long. Really? Long. You're going to drop that on us? <laughs> uh, well, don't well, listen to him, kids. It's only going to be like 76, all right? You guys in Texas? Where are you at? Alabama. Alabama. Down With a Alabama. banjo on my knee. Don't you know his name is... Uh, <laughs> awesome. his, his, his name is... Uh, what, what did I call you? Alabama, Alabama Slim? Slim? Yeah, Alabama Slim. That's his poker name. Now I gave it to him. You can't take that away from me. <laughs> Nice. Because you only get a poker nice. name if somebody gives it to you. So it's Alabama Slim. So there we go. <laughs> there you go. I appreciate the gift, sir. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. All right. Frolly, you want to say your goodbyes? Oh, yeah. I just want to say thanks again to everyone for showing up today. Uh, bummer that Kev didn't make it. This was his topic. In the future, if you suggest a topic and we are going to talk about it, you are <laughs> required to, to be here. Where I'm going to come find you. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Do not leave me to just stand up here and fumble around for an hour and a half. Oh, I that's I want great. all of you to tell Kef that oh, I'm going I'm to right slap now. him so hard in Mafia General. Yeah, yeah. we need to slap memes. Yeah. We got to get everybody slap meme them. <laughs> all right, guys. Take it easy, guys. Rob, Take it easy. Now. Twitter space with your hosts, Stein and Freiler. Please join us every Wednesday at the same time, 5 p.m. UTC. We would like to thank all of our guests for their insights and input on today's topics. We also would like to thank all of you, our listeners, for taking time out from your busy day to join us. A full audio version of this conversation will be provided on our YouTube channel. You can find out more about the Corn Mafia Guild at our website, cornmafiaguild.io. So, until next week, thank you again, and have a great day.